Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgan 111, and welcome to a new video series. In this video series, I plan to talk about how I built a tracker for playing The Legend of Zelda Randomizer. Not all of you may be familiar with The Legend of Zelda and its randomizer, so I'm going to briefly summarize those things first. Uh, and just as an aside, I'm kind of reading from some notes so that I wouldn't ramble and I would stick to the essentials. And the video that you're seeing, the background footage, is just me playing through a seed of Zelda 1 randomizer that I streamed on Twitch a few weeks ago. So let's get to it. The Legend of Zelda is an action-adventure game where you control Link, who's an elf-like character in a green tunic, with the goal of rescuing Princess Zelda, who's been imprisoned in the final dungeon by the evil Ganon, who's also the final boss of the game. In order to enter the final dungeon, Link must first obtain eight pieces of Triforce, which are glowing orange triangles, each of which is hidden deep inside eight other dungeons that are scattered around the overworld. In the original game, Link starts out armed with just a small shield and a wooden sword, but along the way, Link will obtain various key items, such as weapon, armor, and health upgrades, as well as a variety of mobility upgrades. Most screens feature monsters that will attack Link, and one of the commonest rewards from killing monsters is rupees, which is the currency of the game. A variety of shops run by NPCs are scattered about the world, where Link can purchase other weapon and armor upgrades, as well as a number of consumable items, such as bombs, which can be used either to kill enemies or to explode open secret entrances, potions, which can fully restore Link's health, or keys, each of which would open a single dungeon door, and you can make all those purchases using rupees. The overworld map itself is a sprawling 128 screens arranged in a 16 by 8 grid. The majority of these screens contain an entrance to some other location, those locations being either one of the nine dungeons, one of four fast travel points around the overworld map, the cave house of a particular NPC is the final choice. Uh, there's a variety of NPCs. Some of them sell items in a shop. Some of them offer hints about progression, and a number of them will give or steal or gamble rupees, and a few even give away some rare key items. Each dungeon has its own map comprising a grid of rooms that fill some subset of an 8x8 grid mini-map. Each dungeon is a maze-like gauntlet of tougher enemies, where some rooms require defeating a set of enemies or defeating a boss or mini-boss in order to gain passage to the adjoining room, and other rooms may drop a prize item if all of the monsters are defeated. Staircases, which are sometimes secretly hidden, can either lead to basement housing, that, a basement that's housing a key item, uh, or lead to a transport corridor, which will emerge in a different room elsewhere in the same dungeon. Dungeon rooms also occasionally house NPCs, who may offer hints, let you purchase an upgrade, or require a steep payment for passage onwards. So that's a quick summary of The Legend of Zelda. You explore the world trying to find the key locations, get upgrades to become strong enough to defeat dungeons to obtain the Triforce pieces and other key items, and then perhaps use those key items in order to find the next dungeon, and so on and so forth, until finally you have all the things you need to enter the final dungeon, defeat Ganon, and save Zelda. So that's The Legend of Zelda, the game. The Legend of Zelda Randomizer, which I shall probably refer to as Z1R, has literally about a hundred configurable settings for how exactly to change up and randomize the game. But the commonest and most important randomizer flag are basically options that will do a few things. One is it'll randomize the overworld locations. For example, rather than Dungeon 5 being north of the Lost Hills, it can be located almost anywhere on the map. And the same for all the other locations. They're just mixed up and placed anywhere on the map. Uh, the randomizer flags can also randomize the dungeon map layouts. Rather than Dungeon 1 being shaped like an eagle, it might be any layout assortment of a dozen or so rooms. And finally, the randomizer can randomize the key item locations. So rather than the bow being found in the basement of Dungeon 1, it might be in any dungeon or in one of a few other locations. So those are the main things that the randomizer does. And this randomization of locations, map layouts, and key items 
and the key items, many of them are going to gate access either to other entrances on the overworld or other portions of certain dungeons where you need to defeat a particular boss or mini boss in order to gain access to the rest of the dungeon. Uh, those are the types of things that are going to necessitate a tracker, where a tracker is a managed set of note taking which helps the player keep track of the locations that they have yet to explore, the items that they have yet to find, and the maps of dungeons that they have yet to complete. Unless you have a nearly perfect memory or take copious notes, it will be difficult to complete a game of Z1R in a reasonable amount of time, for the same reasons that it can be difficult to complete a Metroidvania style game without a bit of mapping and note taking. In Z1R, the player is constantly forced to re-explore old ground as they gain key item upgrades, which will unlock new locations or new portions of dungeons. Backtracking is typically essential. Having explained the essential features of The Legend of Zelda and its randomizer, Z1R, let's talk about Z1R trackers. The tracker that the vast majority of Z1R players have used over the last five years is called the Z-Helper. It has a ton of features, I'm not going to talk about all of them. It's got stuff like support for online multiplayer cooperative tracking. Uh, online multiplayer co-op is actually pretty fun, I've done it once. Uh, but let's focus on single player, and let's focus on how a Z-Helper deals with the essentials of the randomizer. Namely, tracking the overworld map locations, tracking the dungeon layouts, and tracking the Triforce and key items that the players already managed to pick up. So at this point, let's switch to putting Z-Helper on the screen. So here is Z-Helper on the screen. You can see by default, we're looking at the overworld map, which is the 16 by eight grid of all the different screens that you'll see in the Legend of Zelda overworld. Um, and we are able to mark each individual map tile with what it contains. So we could, for example, I'm just using the scroll wheel of the mouse, uh, mark one of the nine dungeons, we can mark one of the four fast travel uh, transports, as well as a variety of other NPC house caves that might be shops selling certain items um, or giving or taking or gambling rupees, etc. Um, so this is one of the main screens that you would look at in Z Helper, and this deals with overworlds. In terms of tracking the dungeons, there's a separate tab for each dungeon, uh, one through nine, that you can just click at the top. And if you're trying to map a particular dungeon, uh, you can mark the individual rooms of the dungeon inside its eight by eight grid. You'll be able to see a mini map in game of kind of the dungeon layout. And so you can mark rooms that you've completed, for example, with an X. Um, you might mark rooms that you need to come back to for some reason with a question mark. Um, and you can also mark, for example, the transport staircases uh, that'll take you between places. Uh, as Transport Staircase 1 or Transport Staircase 2 might connect these rooms as we're moving around the map. And yeah, I think actually to get an overview of how that works, it might actually make sense. If I go back to the main menu on Z Helper and go into Options, basically here are all the set of things that you can mark on the overworld, and this is basically kind of all of the possible things that can exist on the overworld, uh, shops that sell various items, the various dungeons, uh, and fast travel transports, and a few other special NPCs or special locations kind of along the way. And then inside the dungeons, uh, Z Helper basically has a way, most people that I see using Z Helper, uh, track rooms that they've done, track rooms that they need to come back to for one reason or another, and then track the various transport staircases that connect places in the dungeons, these little numbered icons. And a lot of the rest of the icons go mostly unused uh, by players. They might mark, for example, where the Triforce room is or where an item got picked up occasionally. Um, but yeah, those are the various marks uh, that you can place on the map inside Z Helper. Uh, but let's go back and uh, then also talk about tracking the actual items that you get, uh, the Triforce pieces and the key items. So for example, suppose that I had found Dungeon 6 in this location on the map, I would mark it as level 6, then I would go into Dungeon 6 and start exploring that dungeon uh, clearing out various rooms and trying to find all the particular key items. And so say, for example, that inside Dungeon 6, I found the book and I found the wooden boomerang 
And then I found the Triforce piece. I could mark them on the tracker like this. Uh, basically, each dungeon, most dungeons have two key items inside of them. Um, dungeon 8, for example, uh, actually has three key items. So for example, we could find the bow and the power bracelet and the ladder uh, might all be found in dungeon eight. Uh, and so there's an extra slot over here. Uh, by default, dungeon one and dungeon eight in what's called a first quest dungeons uh, flag setting have three items and all the other dungeons have two items. Um, in second quest, dungeon four has three items and dungeon one only has two items. And so this is what this little uh, one and two are referring to this third item box that can either be in dungeon one or in dungeon four, depending upon what particular randomizer flag settings you're using. Um, and then finally, I had mentioned that there's a few other locations where you can pick up key items off the coast on the map over here. Uh, there's a place that can only be reached when you have the ladder, and so you could pick up a key item over there. Uh, if it were a container heart, it might be marked like that. There's a few spots that have armos, uh, which are robots that you can make move by touching them, uh, and sometimes one of them is covering up an item, uh, and so you might be able to mark that the magic wand was on an armos spot, and you'd mark it up there. And finally, there's the white sword cave, uh, which might either have the white sword or a randomizer. It could have any one of the key items, potentially. Um, and that's just a cave that'll be found, you know, in some random location on the overworld. Uh, and so you might mark it as the White Sword Cave. Um, and once you meet a certain criteria of having enough hearts, um, then you'll be able to pick up the item that the NPC there is just going to give to you. Uh, and so you would mark it on the tracker up there. And so that's basically how you use Z-Tracker in order to keep track of those essential pieces of information that I talked about, which are the overworld map locations, uh, mapping out all the you know, particular dungeon locations and other important locations on the overworld map, the dungeon layouts in terms of what rooms you've been in uh, versus what rooms you might have to come back to in the future, um, and finally, the Triforces and tr key items, which are all just kind of stored up in the very top portion of the tracker up here in order to keep track of how many Triforces you still need to get in order to be able to get into the final dungeon, as well as what other key items you're still missing uh, that you need to find. For example, the, the Any Key or the Raft, which allows you to get to a certain number of island locations on the map. So that demonstrates that Z Helper does the essential bits in order to be a tracker for Z1R. I don't know much about how or why Z Helper was originally developed, or how it came to be the tracker that's used today by most Z1R casual streamers and speedrunners both. Um, but Z Helper has a number of design flaws and usability problems for Z1R players and for viewers of Z1R streams. And so in a future video, I'm gonna discuss all of those problems. And then with that understanding, we can consider how to better design a tool to meet the needs of Z1R players and stream viewers. So look forward to that in a future video. Hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you again soon.